perfect. Uh, so good morning everybody. Uh, sorry for being uh, five minutes late. Um, it's someone from the organization team here in charge of uh, the time of my talk. Perfect. So we will just say that it was more late and pretend that it's normal that I do not finish on time, but a lot of stuff to say about uh, the system security. Uh, before let me present myself. Um, my name is uh, Michael Chiré, I'm living in Paris. I'm French, but you can uh, recognize by my sexy English accent, as my teacher I used to say a long time ago. Uh, I'm working at Fredat, I'm the system administrator of the Open Source and Fredat team, which is a team focused on editing your strategy and community conduct. Uh, most of the lab are doing community management, but also writing documentation, uh, rather helping people to write documentation, and uh, doing system administration and everything. And I'm the legal half of the team uh, doing system administration, the user half being a co worker of mine uh, living currently in Tokyo. And uh, before that, I was working for a company making uh, Python uh, firewall and security stuff, the company crashed. And before, I was a system administrator for a big uh, low band institution, which was an interesting uh, job, partially because um, of the low passing world and how it was quite like, fun, but like Gilbert that like. But again, yeah. so um, I just want to start by a quick survey. Um, so I will ask questions and people can raise their hand. So first, is there someone here working for the army? No. Someone working for a bank? Yeah. Uh, just keep your you know, hand uh, raised. Someone working for a big multinational doing software on this kind of stuff where you know there is kind of industrial secret and stuff to protect? Yeah. People doing system administration, release engineering for free software, like stuff that could be targeted. Yeah. yeah. So, congratulations to the people who raise their hand are potential targets for all kind of criminal or foreign agency and everything. <laughs> and for the other, well, it's not because you are not working on free software that you are not targeted. Um, this morning I did read that um, some foreign government, um, like Iran, was targeting uh, human rights activists, and I guess that no one here would say. Human rights are not important. So yeah. On Telegram. On Telegram, yeah. So before talking about security, we always make the same joke, but it only work in French. So let's uh, speak about the various security concept and back to basics. Uh, it's all about CIA, not the CIA, the bad guy in the movie in the 70s. It's all about um, the three principles, first one, availability, like making sure that the system you are supposed to protect the system administrator or the engineer are still working as they should because let's imagine you are an e-commerce uh, system administrator if the website is not working you are losing money and I do not need to explain how losing money is bad for most companies which are not started um, then there is confidentiality if you are part for example of a political party you do not want your email to be leaked is it in the US or in Turkey uh, for obvious freedom and there is integrity which is basically to mean that you are supposed to be able to do stuff, but you are not supposed to edit anything, like edit the password, change the configuration, change the da data, so you need to protect your system from modification for unauthorized people. And in practice, there is a lot of attacker, but uh, from what I see, it's two types of attacker. The usual one, the one that you can see quite easily, it's all kind of uh, automated and uh, low skill one, um, like SSL brute force, it did happen quite often. Uh, if you want to see all it works, I did a presentation in Bono uh, four months ago about uh, some uh, project I'm working on that did have a root password, root first secret, like not a secret password, like it was secret. And of course people did enter. And on the other side, there is a LED. It's not about the packet management from Debian, which is not considered as a it's not considered as a security problem. And it's not for me. It's about advanced persistent threats. It's like a big criminal organization that wants to devote a lot of resources to get you or foreign government. The difference between the two is just that uh, it's not illegal to do hacking when you are part of the government, at least in your jurisdiction. And um, for the talk, I will make a few assumptions that you are running a laptop, mostly because I forgot how to say workstation. I'm running a laptop since a long time, so some of the uh, technique I will speak about will be applicable only to laptop, like you do not have problem of uh, your workstation being stolen when you are sleeping in the, in the hotel. 
for example, the people do not take their workstation on fit, but for that, that something that will happen. And yeah, so you get your computer, you got it for your IT service, you boot it, you get it at the black market, you steal, some, steal it from someone in the hotel room. And first thing you need to do to secure it is to decide on an operating system. So it's quite obvious that you need to use free software, mostly because we are free software um, conference, but if you are not convinced, well, free software is better, you can see if there is a that the kind of stuff, it's not like people always look, but at least you know that uh, the interests of the coder are the same as you. It's not like they have interest into tracking you and uh, adding some feature, like you can see on Windows if you remember how it looks out of the box. So free software is not sufficient, you need to use something supported. We all know that Fedora 9 was a better distribution because it was before Kubsodio and maybe if you know something before SystemD or before Monkey, but they are no longer supported if you run that because it was better. But you have no security update, you do not get anything. So please do not do that. Do not do like a friend of mine that decided to try Firefox 3 to see if it was faster. It was likely faster, but it was also likely well, much less secure. Okay. Uh, if you can, try to use a recent display because I did better security, uh, security thing. So on the kernel, on GCC. Uh, all kinds of new stuff. Um, it's not that I do not like the other distro, I'm already in OS 7, but um, yeah, I sometimes just want to switch that laptop to Fedora because it's good, it gets a lot and a lot of features for security. Also, I do not use one own repository. Um, it's not that I do not trust people running Copper, but anybody can upload anything built on, uh, well, without something which is slightly less secure than the and and slightly less review and kind of stuff. So please do not take one of the you do not know where people will stop to support it and it goes back to the rule of not using unsupported software. If you do not decide to follow my advice, please check the build system of the distribution you are using. Uh, I'm not wanting to single out uh, Mint, but uh, yeah, I think that they do not have a good build system because they uh, really have no security for their website. And there is no information at all they build their package. They are doing a good job, but it's not secure enough for me. So now we just selected the operating system. So now if you didn't install with an encrypted disk, or well too bad, uh, it's on Linux. You cannot uh, just uh, check a box. You need to go back and install everything. Um, if someone is working on an Anaconda installer, it would be nice to be able to switch later. It seems that there is some way that they can go uh, copying everything and doing some low level stuff. It's much easier on Mac OS X. You just check a box, wait, and that's it. I recommend to go for Lux and the full disk encryption. It's not like you only have something to protect in your home. Sometimes you have a MySQL database, sometimes you don't want people to modify your disk and everything. Usually people ask me about uh, NeuroCrypt and TrueCrypt. Um, TrueCrypt, I think, was uh, maintained for some time. Um, the good part is that it's running on more than one OS. The bad part is that we do not care. I said that you need to use Linux or BSD. <laughs> so I don't think that uh, there was a security audit that it's working quite fine, but yeah, I still prefer to get a native solution which is supported by well, my employer, but by the community at large. And so people also ask me why. And yeah, I never get any problem, and I heard that uh, for this computation is taking my battery, and I need that to play Pokemon while on the plane, so I do not want to spend the battery or anything. I said, yeah, but um, with that, you are protected from uh, theft. Like, you just uh, go to some place and you say, I don't want to carry my laptop because it's quite easy. That's what I did yesterday for the tour. Um, yeah, I wish I was less paranoid and was able to keep it in my room, but too bad I can't. And yeah, at least if someone forgets the laptop, I've done quite a lot for some security services, like the UK one. Well, Technically, people are not able to steal the document and do something bad with them, like, you know, publish them or use them or use the passwords that are stored in the browser. So it's not perfect. Uh, there is a class of attack called, called good attack. Without going into the detail, uh, when you shut down the system, while the memory is not white, which is bad, which means that someone can just take it, put it on another system, start it, and dump the memory. And in the memory, there is a key to unlock your disk. And if you have the key, well, you have the content. So you need to steal the laptop, 
skip the disk, which is usually attached to the laptop, skip the memory, which is also attached to the laptop. On this disk, it's solder, so it's quite complicated, but on other, it's not the case. And yeah, people can access as long as the laptop is running. So it's called the Evil Mail attack. Oh, no, no, there is this attack, there is also the Evil Mail attack, like you leave your laptop unattended in your room, and someone pretend to be a maid, and it turns out that it's not a maid, it's just born with a good um, this, this guys and someone just uh, modifies the laptop and you know when you encrypt the disk you get a prompt like your password and it turns out that surprise it's not the regular federal password it's one that records everything or send it by sms or whatever and it's even it was purely a theoretical attack until someone uploaded it to get on the real attack which is working quite fine, you just run it and it detects that it's Ubuntu, it detects this is uh, Fedora and everything and it changes the init early because the way it works is that you need to have something which is unencrypted to decrypt everything and that's the part which is attacked by uh, the evil mail attack. So, well, just take a look for that. So, of course, if you want to protect from that, there is secure boot. Um, the result to be written and said about secure boot but basically it verifies each step of the boot that nothing was uh, modified or tampered with. Um, you can do that with a signature. Obviously, you do not need to trust the signature key for Microsoft. You can upload your own key, then it starts to become well, annoying and complicated because for each kernel update you need to sign everything and you need to store the key securely or it's not working and it's quite annoying. So people proposed another approach uh, using a TPM. The TPM is a small crypto chipset on your, um, on your laptop that only good secure boot but can be used for other stuff. And uh, there is a program called anti uh, which is basically using uh, TPM with a one-time password. Uh, I don't speak that much about it. Uh, Matthew Garrett did a presentation uh, six months ago for the Cloud Computer Congress. Um, it was a whole presentation, so I'm not going to be able to explain something about uh, products that I do not know that much and in less than a one, less than half an hour. So I recommend if you are interested to take a look. It was not so easy to use because it was not uh, integrated. But uh, yeah, that's something to, uh, to take a look. While we are speaking about low level stuff, um, I don't know if you heard about FireWire, it's what we have ever called uh, Thunderbolt. And there is some attack where you plug something on the laptop and it turns out that it can do direct memory access, which basically means dump the memory. Um, there is an interesting tool called Inception for that. So it's supposed to work. Um, I've never been able to test, not because I didn't have enough laptop, I do. Uh, when I didn't, I just used the laptop of people who didn't look after it in the office. The problem is that I never managed to get the good cable to plug from my laptop to another laptop, thanks to standardization, there is three types of cables, so you need to have the right combination. So if someone managed to make it work, it will be nice. If it not work on Fedora, it would be also nice to tell me so I can fix uh, the slide. So yeah, that's quite bad. Um, for point of view, there is other approach to protect. So the first one is to not store the key on memory. You can use something called the Fedora to store it on the processor. I do not know if it's uh, it was a research paper, I don't know what happened after, I think it was not perfect stream, but if you have free time, well, please push it for me. Yeah. It was published here, but um, was it pushed upstream and like, can I use it or do yeah. I need to patch yeah. the kernel? Yeah, yeah. Uh, a patch against the kernel 2.4 or something like this? No, also that is not. Okay, so there is a patch. Uh, ask Patrick if you want uh, anything. Another more workable solution is to use a bootloader on the stick. So basically, Grub supports directly LUTs, so you can put Grub uh, directly on the stick. And if you get a self-encrypted stick, then as long as you have the stick in your pocket, which is much easier to, uh, to carry around than the laptop, but people technically should not be able to do too much on your data. And uh, that's something which is not easy to do on the Fedora because while you are using a kernel with module and you need to update, uh, you need to have custom hook and everything, it's much easier to do with J2 because you have to do everything so you can just decide to compile or from uh, scratch the kernel and add it monolithic and that's it. Uh, if you get a fingerprint reader, try to not use it. It's not a security device at all. Uh, I mean, 
You can imagine that for something that costs uh, 10 dollars, well, you do not get exactly military grade security. It's quite the contrary, it's more convenient stuff, so you do not type your password. And it's better to not type your password. Uh, even on iPhone, it's mostly used for unlocking something fast, but it's supposed to not work after a while, and you need to type the password. Uh, speaking still about hardware, uh, there is various USB attack. So if you get by the, if you just get some random bit, <laughs> Uh, saying that, oh, it's five years at your company, there is a custom gift from China, just put it on your iPad, well, don't. Because, it's not because something is a lamp, like a nice lava lamp, it's not really a lamp, it could be a keyboard, it could be a USB stick, or like a disk or anything. And it turns out that the Linux kernel has a lot of flight system, and some of them who are kinda unused, like, do people remember about GFS2, about Amiga file system? And it turns out that if nobody uses it, it's likely that nobody looks at it, and it's likely that there is a lot of bugs, and some of them being security bugs, and you do not want to have security bugs in the kernel. And when it's not file system bug, well, there is also a huge, huge number of USB widgets and all kinds of gizmos that can be detected by the Linux kernel. And when it's not that, it's about printer, which is a spawn of evil, as everybody says. Um, so, yeah. If you plug random stuff, you are asking for a potential problem. And the same goes for HDMI uh, plug. I mean, there was a Black Hat uh, talk uh, two years ago about it. So, I can take a look at the uh, software for USB World. I think it was written by someone from uh, the Red Hat uh, Office, but I'm not sure. I was supposed to do that before the presentation, but I was too busy trying to fix it. <laughs> So yeah, I will stop uh, speaking about hardware uh, security because well, it's quite depressing. If you are not convinced, you can take a look at the presentation from uh, Joanna Rukova, uh, the QoS uh, the QoS uh, founder. Uh, she did it, something about how everything is completely broken and we have to wait for a new type of laptop for that. Um, yeah, we're going to you can take a look at the QoS. Uh, I think that uh, there is maybe one developer there. I said that they need to come so they can complain to people changing stuff and working Fedora and the other system. I'm not sure if you will be able to come, but yeah. So, back to the operating system. Now, um, we know that we cannot really trust uh, the hardware, but it should work mostly. So, back to the basics. Well, it's quite obvious, you use a strong password. I will not discuss about uh, what is really strong, because people disagree. Um, I just need to remind you that you need to take human factor in account. Yeah, it may be a password of uh, one of the characters secure, but you cannot remember that, so we likely write it on a post-it, or store it in a password file or something. So try to get something that you can remember, try to make sure that you get some uh, way to get different passwords uh, for different services. If you can, try to use a password manager. Uh, I can't recommend one because uh, most of them are online and that's uh, services, and if I do not pay for the services, I wonder how they make money. So you can get something called the uh, pass. I think that federal infrastructure is currently trying to use it for uh, the Twitter and the uh, WordPress account or this kind of stuff. So just get uh, people from the federal magazine or uh, Twitter or federal info to ask to ask them how it works because I have no idea and I'd like to delegate a question on the browser. If you can try to avoid uh, keeping your data on the laptop, uh, because if the data is not here, but well, it's not going to compromise, sometimes you need to get password to do your job, but do not start to get a copy of all your secret data on all possible uh, laptops you have. It's going to be problematic. If you can, or you can separate your user, like have one user to go on the line guide and one user to go on the server, and the one going on the web to get a picture of cat well, can be attacked, but you do not have access to SSH key and all kind of stuff. Well, if you can try to get several computer, it works quite well. I mean, it's hard to have a computer which is not connected to another. It can technically be done, but uh, when people are at that level of sophistication, usually it's easier to just give you money to do whatever you do. <laughs> and if people prefer to spend one million to have my computer, I can do it for half of the price. And it's not an offer, but it's just a reminder. And you need to make sure that you prevent remote exploit. So obviously, you need to use a firewall. And by using, I mean using it and blocking stuff, not using it and opening everything. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you need to disable what you do not need. Uh, OK, maybe it's easier for you to work 
on the copy of the production server on your laptop, but maybe you do not need to be like your production server and without SLI Linux and without firewall. So if you need to have something, do not listen to the network. You can even run a FTP server or Apache, but just run on a local host. If you got a computer which is fast enough, which is basically something which is less than 10 years old, you can use a VM or Broadband, it turns out to work quite great. And then you just need to separate the VM from the rest of the world. So container can be a solution, it depends on the problem, like if you get bored or if you have too much free time, container can be a solution for that. Um, there is a world talk dedicated about uh, securing container. Uh, it was yesterday, so if you can go back in time, just go watch it. If not, it will be uploaded to YouTube. Uh, but yeah, if you have the choice between VM and container for security, just go for virtual machine, it's much better. So we are not on Windows, it's not recommended to use a virus scanner, and it turns out that in fact they are quite dangerous. Uh, I don't know if you follow the Google Zero project, but it's basically Google having to throw a lot of money on the problem and hire a lot of security guys who just try to poke all the flash in Adobe in the virus scanner. And it turned out to be like quite catastrophic. Like they are doing security analysis directly in the Windows scanner with uh, C code which is quite unsafe or forgetting to disable administration interface without password or all kinds of stuff. I mean, you know, security is part of the business of your scanner, but well, it's not what they are doing. So yeah, it's much better to be running without a virus scanner, at least on Linux. It's not like we have a ton of uh, virus scanner virus problem. So um, it seems that I have a slide about Shodan and IPv6 because the first time I did the presentation it was um, well not a big discussion but it was a discussion. There is a lot of people who think that okay my server is connected on IPv6 and no one will be able to find uh, the the address because you know it's IPv6, it's like uh, several time order bigger than the regular internet, so no one will be able to find anything and turn out that Shodan, which is a company doing scanning of the whole internet and indexing all kinds of uh, webcam or printer connected to the network. Or it's quite scary to see how much people are trusting the fact that no one knows the IP address. While it's using uh, NTP, like when you do an NTP request, it will see that that IPv6 is a valid IPv6 and they will scan you and just uh, list your IP address as maybe vulnerable. So, um, yeah, do not trust uh, that you get an IPv6 and no one will find you. It's not something like that. Um, yeah, it, it seems to be the part where I just started to lose complete currency over my style because this one <laughs> is about uh, another interesting stuff that you need to see. It's uh, the Enigma conference. It was a security conference uh, in January. And the keynote was done by some guy from the NSA, which was a uh, chief of the tailored access operation which is basically people who get custom access for the NSA to foreign target, like I don't know, UI, French Grandland, Belgium, Techco, and everything. And basically what he said is like, okay, our job is to attack everything, but uh, we want to show you how to defend. It's like, we are too bored and we need to get more action, so let's try to get rid of the easy stuff and get us something worse. Basically what he said is like, NSA has a lot of resources, and we can wait one month, uh, two months, six months, just for that time when we will disable the firewall for five minutes and at that precise time we will attack because we have people waiting just for that. So yeah, that's basically traditional military way. Like, we got a problem, just throw more money and more people at it. So it's not like they get um, extra security stuff or all kind of stuff, but it's still interesting. And so we explain that, for example, to attack while they are using phishing, it's like uh, detecting someone and saying, oh, by the way, you need to open that file, so do not open random uh, attachment. Um, I mean, it seems quite obvious, uh, but that's not only NSA doing that. It's uh, criminal, it's a uh, foreign uh, conflict, like, again, uh, that's what happened to uh, some uh, human rights activists. And the problem is you can say, yeah, it's only targeting Windows, but no, as long as you know that people are running like OpenOffice or LibreOffice, and we recommend LibreOffice because you know it's actually update for security. Uh, the Linux you can use article about that. So yeah, uh, they can make a targeted uh, targeted uh, payload for just your office suite, and then you can yeah basically get screwed quite easily. So if you can, you can use a sandbox. 
So if you have a lot of memory, you can create a photo with VM. I know some guy in Canada doing exactly that. He starts Firefox, oh no, he starts a specific instance of Firefox running the specific plugin for video conference we are using at work in a specific VM. He spent the whole afternoon working on that after we joked uh, while drinking coffee. But it's secure because everything gets thrown away after. Uh, if you do not want to spend too much time, you can use SO Linux Sandbox. It's working quite well, but after each upgrade, it got disabled uh, for some reason that I do not understand. Um, I need to test that on Fedora. And if not, I will just uh, complain to people uh, in the company. Uh, there is other stuff like uh, FireJet and everything. Um, there is Docker, but do not use Docker because it's too complicated. Um, it's not made for security. It's mostly made for uh, sysadmin and ease of use and uh, well, basically being able to move from production to QA or rather the other side. But it's not really made for security. Take something made for security, please, not Docker. Uh, you can also use SLMX on the desktop. So by default, there is some process uh, where are contained, uh, like the thumbnail, maybe the plugin for Firefox. Um, you can use the uh, MCS policy, which is an uh, example that we give in documentation and I've never seen used except for testing. It's like you say, yeah, it's a document, it's top secret, so the users need to have a top secret clearance and everything, and it's working quite well uh, right, when you test. It's just that uh, it's for military, uh, and that's it. You can use the content user, so I did try that for you. Uh, it was quite painful because I need to administrate my laptop, so each time I need to want to do something like, you know, opening a port, it's not working, looking at the road, it's not working, so I need to go root and go unconfined, which kind of well, breaks the whole idea of having a content user, and the user is content that uh, it can only touch to his own file, and it turns out that my data are on my own, so it's not working that well. So you can do like this something, but uh, there is a lot of work to do for that. Uh, another option is to look at the uh, XDJ app, which is now called Flatpak. Um, again, there was a good presentation I heard uh, yesterday. Um, well, I didn't see it, but uh, I heard it's good. So you can go look at uh, all the known people are trying to contain everything and make sure that the random package coming from the internet do not break too much havoc, because what could go wrong with random package coming from the internet? If you are using Ubuntu, there is also uh, Snappy and everything. And yeah, the biggest part uh, for your desktop security is your browser, because well, we all know that the browser can do everything. Like you can send email, you can play music, you can um, use a webcam or everything. I'm pretty sure that soon people will be able to replace systemd by Firefox. <laughs> so yeah, basically it was the choice on Linux between Chrome or Firefox. I would try to, it's not that I do not like um, Epiphany, but I think that it's not really a browser which is used by much people. So I tend to favor Firefox mostly because I trust more Mozilla than Google. So I will speak only on Firefox security, even if I think that Chrome, um, Chrome architecture seems to be better. So on the Firefox security, if you need to remember only one single thing of my talk is remove flash. Like you just do, you just remove it. You do not use it. I do not use it since five years. And the only thing I'm missing is playing some uh, ninja game on uh, the web. It's not like a big deal. You can uh, watch YouTube. You can avoid uh, advertisement and all kind of stuff. If you need to do something else, well, uh, there is Java. Um, I think that Java is not that well maintained these days, and there is still a big security problem. I mean. It's to be expected. Uh, it's like a complete uh, virtual machine to execute random code from the internet, and a lot of stuff can go wrong. Uh, if you can do that, you can also block multimedia content. Um, again, because codecs are quite complex. So it's not like blocking completely, but at least blocking from auto playing. Like if you want to go to YouTube, you can say, OK, I trust YouTube to block uh, content, but I do not get a random advertisement. Um, there is also a lot of issue with uh, WebGL and direct 3D access. I think it's disabled by default Firefox, but make sure that uh, if they enable something, well, you can actually trust uh, NVIDIA driver, you can actually trust uh, all kind of stuff, because I prefer to work on performance rather than security. And it turns out that maybe sometimes I may use some shortcut, and you do not want to have some shortcut being used in code, which is running in the kernel, 
for the device that can access the wall memory and it's like a receipt for disaster. Same goes for WebRTC and all kinds of network access. Um, well, you don't want your Firefox to start uh, sending a random packet on your uh, internet, internet net. I mean, that's what Skype was doing and it was quite efficient to bypass firewall. So, uh, something that most people do not do is using a master password. Uh, you can record the password directly in Firefox, but um, if anybody taking your laptop can then access it, it's quite bad, so I recommend using a master password. Uh, there is a few exceptions that are quite nice, like HTTPS everywhere, so we can be sure that stuff are quite secure, or at least more secure by default. If you really like uh, clicking on the menu to enable uh, all kinds of websites, uh, there is no script. It's quite fun. Now uh, you get back uh, the experience of uh, 20 years ago when nothing was working. <laughs> but at least you are protected from uh, all kinds of attack. And if, like me, you go always on the same website, it gets uh, less problematic at all time. Also, I heard about it. Um, another nice uh, extension is Serpentor. Like, let's say you are traveling, you are going to uh, China. And suddenly you discover that the website of your company is using a different uh, HTTPS um, uh, certificate and it turns out that it's not signed by your well, DV cert, suddenly it's signed by a random China Corp. So yeah, it's quite bad. And some platform try to verify that uh, the certificate didn't change too much since last time and say to you, oh, there might be something uh, going. So if you can, you can remove the CA because there is like uh, really 100 or 200 of them and most of them coming from government and not only from a well, democratic government, I shall, shall I say. And yeah, you can imagine that laws can be different and then you know, they can use uh, some certificate just for you because that's what we sold them. So yeah, if you want, try to remove CA and um, or at least try to filter them. If you want to be really depressed, you can look up for something called the rollover.js. Uh, it's an attack where you randomly flip the same uh, part of memory, and it turns out that after a time, it starts to flip other bytes, other parts of the memory. It's quite depressing. Um, I will not speak about more about it because it's like you cannot block it, you cannot do much more except changing your complete architecture of your PC. Um, so yeah, and there is a question of privacy, which is not exactly about security. But it turned out that uh, after the Edward Snowden revelation three years ago, uh, that some, uh, some foreign agency is uh, targeting specific people and they do that because they know who they are. And because there is mass surveillance, so from government, but also tracking all over the world, well, it's quite easy to get some specific target without, uh, without doing much. I mean, uh, those people who did upload uh, exploit in advertisement. There are some people using the targeting of Twitter to specifically troll specific uh, parts of the population. Like, say you want to get a bug for Microsoft Windows and you just say, yeah, I want to get that on people getting on Twitter on that specific place in Poland at that specific time for that specific uh, part of the population. And suddenly everybody gets a uh, Windows, uh, uh, Windows uh, advertisement on Twitter. So, it's quite, well, it's just some trolling, but you can do worse. Uh, I know someone, some white supremacist, uh, treating that to uh, anti-fascist and this kind of stuff. Uh, people treating about uh, abortion directly at people around abortion clinic and this kind of stuff. So, yeah, it can be quite bad. And um, well, I recommend to use some two stuff. First is adblock, but well, not adblock because it's uh, taking all your memory and you need your memory to run a virtual machine or this kind of stuff, or just running for your phones. So it's mostly you block, which is slightly better. And there is another one called Cookie Monster that basically remove all the cookies. So I'm not sure if it's that efficient to block, but it's slightly making things a bit more complicated, and if you are using no script, it gets much harder to target you. Uh, if you really want to get protected, there is a Tor and Tails to both the web. So Tor is a Zionian router, I think I do not need to present it. Tails is a Debian-based system with a custom browser and everything that tries to erase everything once you stop the system. So you do not leave any trace, which is great. You need to make sure that you save your document, which is not great. If you do work. <laughs> so yeah. And it's quite secure, people are working with that, they are doing a lot of things quite right, like doing uh, 
UX testing and all kind of stuff, discussing with journalists and understanding what all the people did do here, doing automated uh, graphical testing and all kind of stuff that well, we should really be doing, I think. It just requires motivation. And yeah, as well as all kind of uh, local attacks who are not on the internet. So obviously you need to use a screen server and obviously with a password. I mean, so you have to set up for looking on idle because someone will sooner or later say, yeah, you need to come right now. There is some cake in the kitchen and you say, oh, cake, you need. And yeah, if you forget to lock your laptop at the office, it will just be that someone is sending an email using your computer or uh, if it's like me, preparing to send an email two days after, so you are just using your laptop and suddenly an email go out and you do not understand why. And people tend to freak out who is that. And thanks to Zimbra, I will understand later. <laughs> <laughs> so do not forget about TTY. I mean, sometimes if you are the only technical person in the place, well, they do not know about TTY, but sometimes you are not the only one and people may check. So you can use a bash, uh, bash variable called the uh, tmout for timeout and after some time it should just disconnect you. It's also working on server, it's quite uh, good. So you see, do not leave your root shell. Uh, you can lock it. Make sure that you take care of the pseudo security, um, like making sure that your credential expire, like you type your password. You do not want to type it each time, especially if it's uh, the first uh, chapter of uh, Lord of the Ring. But uh, you want to get it expired after five minutes or something like this. Uh, if you can, you can disable ptrace. So for people who do not know, ptrace is a Cisco that can be used to inject code in other process. It's used by GDB, it's used by s and it can be used by your compromised Firefox to upload some code in your SSH agent with the obvious problem of dumping the key, recording the key, or whatever. So it can be disabled in two ways with a SLNX boolean or with a Yara module, and you can re enable when you want. Like if you want suddenly to, uh, well, to debug something, just uh, do it. But by default, you should disable it. Uh, speaking of SSH, well, most of the time, if someone is targeting a sysadmin, which is my case, uh, not that I'm targeting sysadmin, I am a sysadmin, so uh, what I want to protect is not uh, the list of, um, it's not the list of websites I always go, uh, it's mostly the SSH uh, key. So, first, get the password of the key. Uh, if you don't want to type it each time, because the whole idea of using a key is to not type your password, you can use the SSH agent. Uh, yeah. uh, if you use the SSH agent, do not forward it, because if you forward on another system, well, yeah. someone can use uh, the forwarded agent to connect, and uh, you will not see it. Uh, there is no log or anything. It's quite bad. Um, I recommend usually to get a different key per device. Uh, like I get one laptop, I have one key for the laptop, another laptop, another key. Uh, mostly because if something, if the key is compromised, I know what I need to remove. Some people are recommending one key for each server and laptop. Um, I think it's too much, but it's up to you to do your trade-off. In any case, you need to change the key on a regular basis. Um, because someone steals the password, uh, the key, uh, which is protected by the password, and it takes um, two years to break and test everything, like using uh, 1,000 interns for that. Well, if you change the key every six months, well, they will take two years to work it, and it will be useless. So for that, you need to work on uh, automated uh, key changing, which is a part that I didn't do, but uh, again, do what I say, not what I do. <laughs> um, because once it's automated, it's much easier. You just uh, start it by phone or something like this. You can uh, store the key on a smart card. If you get a smart card reader, it can be quite uh, cheap. I mean, it's like uh, 50 euro. Uh, you can get a cheaper one if you live in Paris. Uh, because we use a smart card to pay for, um, for the public transportation, and they give them for 7 euro. It turns out to not be working that well, but it's uh, cheaper for testing. Uh, you can get a UV key or equivalent, or like need for key or all kind of stuff. Uh, I do have one plug on my laptop, it's working well, except that uh, it was not uh, working on that version of well, and it's not supporting the key I want to put on it, so it's working, it's just not like what I want. Uh, another solution is to store something on the TPM, as I said, the TPM can do some crypto operation, 
And there is a package called the uh, simple TPM PK11, which is not yet included in Fedora because the guy doing the package uh, is lazy. It's me. I'd rather speak about doing the job than doing the job. <laughs> <laughs> and yeah, it worked quite well. My key is on my uh, cannot be used without the TPM. And the day I lose the laptop, I will basically um, cannot access any server anymore. And the same is the mother world is a thread. So it's not that way, if you need to have another key, it can a problem, but um, technically people should not be able to get it without spending a lot of money to get my laptop and get specific equipment to get stuff out of the TPM. So I think it's quite secure if you trust the TPM. Um, yeah, whatever you do for the desktop, uh, desktop security is not uh, everything. You still have the confused deputy issue, which is basically a summon that will use your credential or your access to do something that you are not supposed to do, like erasing all the backup or all kind of stuff. So you still need to add server side protection. So there is basically three things to do. First, audit. Second, audit. And third one, audit. Uh, obviously, you need to store the audit on a different server, because if someone managed to get root access on the server, well, they can remove the log and audit, so it's much harder if it's uh, another server. I do not recommend to not write documentation about that because people do not read documentation, but it also makes administration harder. Uh, you need to make it hard or slow to clean and delete. Uh, so if someone wants to delete, you need to have a system like, okay, it will be deleted, but it will take like one day or something. So if you see something, you can prevent uh, the cleaning of uh, the log. Uh, you can use uh, usage-based uh, tracking and machine learning on events, like seeing that suddenly at 4 in the morning when you are on PTO, you connect from China, maybe it's suspicious. But to be honest, it's completely creepy, and without surprise, that's what Facebook and Google are using in their internal system. Like you are looking at documentation you are not supposed to look, you get an email to say, yeah, what did you that was looking at the documentation about that stuff? And you say, uh, yeah, it was me, are you watching me? So, yeah. Uh, it seems to be working quite well. I mean, we didn't know that much about uh, security problem. And, yeah, what about data? Because I spoke about security, but security is also about availability. So, you need to make backup. Uh, everybody is doing backup, so I will not explain why you need to do that. Uh, you need to make sure that the data is encrypted, because it's nice that if you encrypt your laptop, but suddenly the server, which is uh, sitting somewhere in the data center, is not encrypted and the data is in clear text, well, it's bad, because there is people coming that just take one disk and you are using a red array, so you don't see that one drive disappear, and yeah, they just got the data. And when they finish copy, they can just put it back, and since no one read it with the logs until it's too late, you will not see that your data did disappear, it, it did happen for real, and I did see it. So you can consider using uh, MyBS, an infusion detection system. I know a few people running that on their own laptop. Uh, you can use Grow, you can use the Snort. So it's basically the same as an antivirus, and you remember what I said about well, antivirus. I think that at least it's free software, so we can be sure that they are doing proper security stuff. Uh, it's better to use Ed or Qplayer. It's working quite well. If you can, you can try to use a read-only file system. Uh, if you can, you can even go on OS3, and then you need to go see uh, Patrick uh, talk about it. Um, and you can also use a uh, logwatch, uh, see if suddenly uh, your laptop is doing some weird stuff, either the processor is burning, or suddenly someone is trying uh, 1000 passwords per second on your SSHD, uh, because you didn't listen to me, and you are still running SSHD uh, on your laptop. So, um, yeah, it can be quite nice to get an email to say, oh, something fishy is going on, you need to stop everything you do, please disconnect from the internet, and um, yeah. So, yeah, to conclude, uh, I still have six minutes of question, because I have a nice clock on my uh, screen, you cannot see it. So, first, thank you for coming, and if you have any questions, you have, like, five minutes, I think. What's your opinion on password manager? So, the question is, what is my opinion on password manager? Um, you mean like specific password manager or the concept? Uh, well, I think the concept is quite good because you remember one master password, but uh, can you recommend some password manager? Or? So the question is can I recommend the password manager? And the answer is no, I cannot recommend. Um, I would recommend to people to use something which is free software, which is maintained and everything. Uh, using some I prefer to use something which is uh, local uh, because 
I do not want to depend for my password on some infrastructure to be up and some infrastructure maintained by someone else. Um, I use the password replication feature of Firefox, uh, which seems to be working quite well, and they say that everything is computed on my side, so that's good. I have good things about Pass. It's using, uh, I think, Git and uh, JPG, which is great because I do trust uh, the two software, but that's not great because it's not exactly good example of uh, usability. Uh, the fact we are using Git and uh, GPG as a custom gene plugin when I was uh, working in web and IT. And let's say that there were significant usability issues with people who were, were not spent the 10 years working on free software. Uh, people losing their private key, people forgetting about it, and uh, people having problems with something like a diacritic mark in their name and GPG not handling that correctly and all kind of stuff. So it works well, but I think we need to get something much easier to use. No. Um, another question? Yep. Uh, you mentioned those, like uh, no one mentioned uh, Unitrix is another yeah. probably looks like that. I find it easier to use than most of So yeah, you can also use uh, Unitrix, which is made by the same guy as you look, so it's start by you. Um, it's well, it's quite nice. I use it on my browser laptop. And um, yeah, for now I'm using the script and I'm testing each of them. And, yeah. Okay. Yeah, Patrick? Uh, if you ever consider the finding that journal we can do, where you can prove that the file has not been tempted with because you keep the file on your own server. So the question is, did I consider forward secure ceiling from a system D? Uh, the answer is yes, but not on my laptop. Uh, first, because I wanted to test on server first, and there is production and there is testing, and testing is for server. Uh, the second one is because the uh, presentation is already too long, so I don't want to put everything I can say about security, or it would just be a least to speak about security days. <laughs> and there is really a lot of stuff to do, but okay, that's a good point. Uh, this idea has a lot of security feature, and you need to take a look at that. Um, yeah. So, no other question? So, if people want to contact me, well, you can use their email, either after that, or if you want to say something bad, you can send it to my personal email. You can contact me on the IRC, on, I do not say on every possible uh, IRC server, but most of them, uh, for whatever side of the firewall, of the web firewall can uh, be. And if you get some message from me on Twitter, it's not me. If you get someone that looks like me on Facebook, it's not me. And if you get a LinkedIn uh, saying I want to connect with you, it's also not me. So <laughs> thank you for coming. And if you have any question, I will be there or I'm, like getting some food because I get quite hungry and something to drink because speaking for a while, exhausting. And thanks for coming again.